Hey, what's going on friends? So today we are answering a question that I've gotten asked quite a few times over the years, which is what is the best format to read books in? Physical books, eBooks, or audiobooks, where I guess you aren't actually reading the book, but you are still intaking it. Well, I'm gonna save you the horse race here because uh, in my experience, I use all three formats and all three of these can be perfectly viable ways to intake a book. But depending on how you are reading and the purpose of your reading, one of the three might have a slight edge over the others. So that's kind of what I wanna go into in this video. And I'm not gonna break this video down by the format itself and section out that way. Instead, I wanna look at the purpose for which we read, because I think there are four main purposes for why we pick up a book. First and foremost, we sometimes read for relaxation. We read for escapism. We just want to have fun through reading. We may also read to widen our learning, our base of knowledge, or to widen our T, if you wanna think about it that way, the concept of a T-shaped person where you have deep knowledge in one area, but then wide expansive knowledge in many other areas as well. You may also read for deep learning to deeply understand a topic. And finally, you might read for reference, for research, for a specific purpose where you're trying to pull knowledge out of a book and apply it to something you're trying to do. So for each of these four different purposes, what is the best format to choose? Well, again, I think it really comes down to what you enjoy using. All the edges that we're gonna be talking here the advantages, I think they're slight for the most part. And ultimately, reading and the format you choose to read in is just like exercise. There's no perfect routine because the best overall routine is the one that you enjoy and the one that you will stick to. For the first purpose, for reading, for escapism, and for fun, what is the best format? Well, I think in general, the best format here is physical books. And there's some actual research behind this. Now, the first study that we looked at for this video was, uh, albeit pretty small in terms of sample size, but they did find that versus eBooks, people who read physical books were actually better able to remember the order in which things happened in a story. There might be something to the physical tactile sensations you get through reading a book, the you know the act of turning a page, the act of remembering which side of the book you were looking at when something happened, that allows you to have a little bit better memory of what went on than when you're just looking at an iPad screen or a Kindle screen, just scrolling through, uh, in my case, a never ending wall of text because I typically use the scrolling mode on the Kindle app. Another potential down Downside to ebooks in particular is the fact that we often read them on tablets, and even the Kindle devices have a web browser built in, albeit not a very good one. And when we have access to additional information, additional things we can do with our device, it gets a little bit harder to really sink into the world of the book and to really feel like you are reading for fun, to get lost in the story. Now, what about audiobooks for fun reading, for escapism? There are quite a few audiobooks I've actually gone through in terms of fiction that I've really enjoyed, specifically the one that keeps coming to mind for me while I filmed this video is uh, The Martian by Andy Weir. And I have the old RC Bray narrated version that they no longer have on Audible, which is absolutely amazing. But I also know that I typically listen to audiobooks when I'm doing things, when I'm riding my bike or walking to work or doing chores around the house. And because I'm also doing something else that takes a little bit of my attention, not a ton, but a little bit, there are gonna be pieces that I just sort of tune out for. I'm gonna have to navigate a road crossing or something. And that means I'm not getting every single bit of the story and I'm not totally immersed. So again, I think the edge really goes to paper books for escapism style reading. Now, what about widening your T, widening your base of knowledge? Well, like I said earlier, the concept of being a T-shaped person means that you've built deep expertise in at least one area, but then you're also reading to widen your array of knowledge across a broad variety of topics. And for doing that, again, these are small edges we're talking about here, but I actually am personally going to give the edge to audiobooks. And that is because for this purpose for just trying to widen your base of knowledge, that need for complete immersion is less important. And I'm a busy guy. I've got a lot of things I have to do around the house a lot of time. I have to walk to work every single day. There's time throughout the day where I have to do something where my attention isn't completely taken up. And I might otherwise just listen to podcasts or Spotify or just find something to listen to on YouTube. But I can also select a book and I can broaden my knowledge on something in a pretty shallow way that's still interesting and enlightening using an audiobook. For example, I've been riding my bike to work over the past few months listening to Bill Bryson's book on the human body, and I don't feel that I need a complete and super deep understanding of all these different structures. I just wanna learn for learning's sake. So the audiobook format is 
perfect for that purpose. Now, aside from audiobooks, I don't think there's a huge edge between eBooks and physical books when it comes to this type of learning. I might give a slight nod to eBooks simply because it is typically easier to get a new book on a whim. And there are even library programs that will let you borrow eBooks on your electronic devices. So it's just easier to get your hands on an eBook when you want to read something on a whim. Now, one area where I definitely think eBooks have the clear advantage is when you're reading for the purposes of research and reference. When you're trying to pull knowledge out of a book and actually do something with it, synthesize the information and write a book report. Or in my case, the huge video that I'm working on for later this month is an ultimate guide to using credit cards. I've been trying to pull information out of several different sources, including books, and synthesize it into something that I can present to this channel and present to my blog as well. So I need to pull accurate information, I need to collect it, and I think eBooks definitely make this process easier. Not least of which because you can search an eBook. You can easily bring up a little search field and you can type in a term and see where it pops up in the book. Additionally, highlighting and taking notes is quite a bit easier with eBooks. On the Kindle app, for example, you can just use your finger and create a highlight and those highlights actually get collected in a centralized location within the book. Whereas with a paper book, there are definitely ways to highlight. I made an entire video about how I highlight and take notes from books that you can watch after this one, but it's kind of harder to go find those highlights. You don't know where they are, you can't search them, and it's a little bit harder to collect the information from them than it is with, say, a Kindle book. Additionally, you can go even further than simply highlighting in the Kindle app or in the iBooks app because there is an app that I use every day called Readwise. And what Readwise does is it basically just collects your highlights from Kindle books, but also from articles, from tweets, from certain podcast apps, and it keeps them in a central repository. And it goes one step further because they have a public API where you can export your highlights to apps like Obsidian, Roam, and in my case, Notion. So I use Readwise for the express purpose of getting my highlights from Kindle books and from other sources into a Notion database. From there, I can add notes to them and I can even use synced blocks to bring those highlights and those little passages that I'm using for research into the video script and research areas that I'm working on. Now, to be fair to paper books, there is also a Readwise app for mobile devices where you can actually take a picture of the printed page and it has that optical character recognition technology. So you can actually create a Readwise highlight from a paper book, but it is a little bit of a slower and more frictionful process than just creating a very quick highlight in the Kindle app. And that brings us to our final purpose for reading, which is reading for deep understanding, as opposed to that wide understanding that builds the horizontal part of your T. We're talking now about that vertical bar, building really deep understanding of a specific topic. And here I think the edge actually goes back to paper books specifically because they make it so much easier to focus, not get distracted by whatever else is on your device. It's just a little bit easier to maintain focus on a paper book, at least in my experience, than it is on an ebook when you're trying to read for deep understanding and not necessarily trying to pull out references for a research project. Though there is a potential alternative. So recently a friend gifted me the ebook version of Alex Ramosi's $100 million offers. And right in the first chapter, he mentions that a trick he uses is actually getting the audiobook version and listening to it while following along in the print or the ebook version as well. And he says it actually helps him read faster because it helps him to pay attention to the ebook for a lot longer. Now, I do want to mention that if you do this, it's probably not going to make you read faster from an objective sense. And that is because eBooks are typically narrated at about an average of 150 words per minute, whereas skilled readers who are reading silently to themselves and not subvocalizing can typically read between 200 and 400 words per minute without losing a lot of comprehension. So unless you wanna set the audiobook to 2X speed, which does not sound very pleasant to me, you're probably gonna end up actually reading a little bit slower than you would if you were just silently reading to yourself. But if the focus benefit is there, it might be a useful strategy for you. Now, one thing I wanna mention that doesn't really fit into any of these specific categories is that eBooks do have a clear advantage over many print books in the fact that they are more accessible because you can easily change the font size, you can switch things into dark mode, you have a lot of options there. So again, at the end of the day, the format that works best for you is gonna be the one that is number one, most accessible to you, but number two is the one that you enjoy reading. So hopefully this has broken down a few of the different uh, potential technological advantages, format advantages, and focus advantages, but again, ultimately the kind of format that you enjoy 
enjoy the most is going to be the best one the majority of the time. And it's also worth noting that the format of the books you read really isn't the most important factor to reading more often, reading more deeply. That is building a reading habit, which in my experience is pretty easy to fall out of, but it's also possible to get back into as well. One useful tactic that I've used in the past is a 90 day reading challenge. Essentially, I told my friend Martin, hey, I'm gonna read nonfiction every single day for the next 90 days. If I don't, I'm gonna pay you hundred bucks. And I gave him a spreadsheet where I tracked all my progress and he could follow along every single day. And that was a very successful challenge. I read 11 books during those three months, many of which I reference all the time on this channel and I actually built my reading habit long-term after that. And there are a lot of other tricks you can use for building long-term habits, whether it's reading more books or doing anything else you wanna do. And if you wanna learn about some of those tricks, you may wanna take my habit building class over on Skillshare. This is a short one hour, but information packed class on how to break down your goals into actionable daily habits and then actually stick to them long-term, which is probably something you've been thinking about recently since this video is going live pretty close to January 1st. So if you've got a habit you've been wanting to build or you've been trying to build and you've been failing and you wanna find some better tactics for getting it to actually stick, I think you're gonna get a lot out of this class. Over 60,000 people have already taken it and I would love for you to take it as well. And guess what? If you were one of the first 1,000 people to click that link in the description down below and sign up for Skillshare, you're actually gonna get a one month free trial, which means that you can take this class absolutely free. And you can take a ton of other classes during that one month as well, including MKBHD's excellent class on crafting great YouTube videos, along with thousands of other classes from expert teachers on uh, business and marketing, storytelling, audio engineering, uh, video animation, and tons of other topics. So if you wanna start building your skills, if you wanna start building your habits with my class and support this channel, you can sign up for Skillshare using the link in the description down below. And again, if you're one of the first 1,000 people, you're gonna get that free one month trial. You can also click right there on screen to sign up. And if you enjoyed this video, if you're looking for something else to watch, I've got one more video right there on seven books you should read in your 20s. And even if you're not in your 20s, I think they're pretty good reads as well.